What's going on guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update, the stimulus package update, the debt limit ceiling, money, investing, the stock market, and everything you need to know about. We have major breaking urgent news on the debt limit ceiling, which the U.S. government needs to pass a bill to prevent the first ever U.S. government default. They have to do this uh, by October 18th before them, so they have a little bit over a week to do this, or else we will see the first ever government default where the government will literally run out of cash. U.S. Treasury Secretary uh, Janet Yellen says that they will literally run out of money, the U.S. government. Well, uh, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, leader of the Republicans in the Senate, apparently has changed his mind and has offered the Democrats a deal, but it's a temporary deal. I'm going to read you guys the deal, and I want to let you, I, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this, and you can let me know if this makes you feel better about the situation, and uh, well, you can let me know your thoughts on the situation. Here's the information, then we'll discuss what's going to happen later on about this deal and then the upcoming vote. And then we'll hear about the stimulus package, the breaking new information about that as well. Also, if you find these videos helpful, don't forget to hit the like button for us down below. Okay, Mitch McConnell offers the Democrats a deal to solve the debt limit impasse or the debt limit ceiling. Remember, they have to increase the debt limit just to pay the government's bills and to pay the interest alone on the debt limit. Here's the details, and then we'll discuss what this means. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, Republican from Kentucky, is offering the Democrats a deal that could end the standoff over raising the, na the nation's debt ceiling just weeks before a possible default, well, really just days at this point. The GOP, which stands for Grand Old Party, the Republican leader, issued a statement shortly after the Senate Republicans' caucus lunch announcing that he will allow the Democrats to increase the nation's borrowing authority for only two months until December without having to use the cumbersome and time-consuming budget reconciliation process to avoid a filibuster. But there's a catch. In addition to this is only going to raise the debt limit ceiling for two months, the catch is, is that McConnell will require Democrats to vote on a higher debt limit number, something they would be required to do under the Senate's budget reconciliation rules. Instead of only voting on legislation to suspend the debt limit to sometime after next year's midterm elections. Quote, to protect the American people from a near-term Democrat-created crisis, Mitch McConnell says, we will allow Democrats to use normal procedures to pass an emergency debt limit extension at a fixed dollar amount to cover current spending levels into December, Mitch McConnell says. The move by McConnell comes as Democrats had begun talking about making an exception to the filibuster to pass a hike to the debt limit ceiling. But it was not clear the Democrats would be able to do this with Senator Joe Manchin saying, yeah, he wasn't sure about doing this. Mitch McConnell has also offered to speed up the budget reconciliation process to raise the debt limit ceiling if the Democrats decide to go that route. Interesting that he would offer that. Senator Lisa Murkowski, from a Republican from Alaska, says, I think you're going to hear from Leader McConnell. He's going to outline the proposal that he is prepared to discuss with Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. And I think that's going to give us a way out of the woods, which is what we want, and told reporters after lunch. Mitch McConnell says that this will moot Democrats' excuses about the time crunch they created and give the unified Democrat government more than enough time to pass the standalone debt limit legislation through reconciliation. So initially, Democrats delayed their vote on this to consider Mitch McConnell's offer. Then the Democrats said they would accept Mitch McConnell's offer, which is really just a temporary solution to raise the debt limit ceiling for only two months until December uh, it's really a temporary band-aid, which will put us back in this situation uh, potentially in two months. 
Of course, uh, former President Donald Trump accused Mitch McConnell of folding on the debt limit ceiling. Uh, of course, we have former President Donald Trump and Republican leader Mitch McConnell of the Senate have been at odds with each other for months and do not get along. Remember that Mitch McConnell, the leader of the Senate, uh, the minority leader of the Senate, leader of the Republicans in the Senate, and former President Donald Trump, um, we're also at odds with that $1,400 stimulus check that former President Donald Trump wanted to issue. Former President Donald Trump wanted to make that second stimulus check, that $600, $2,000 uh, that did pass in the House. And Mitch McConnell single-handedly blocked that in the Senate when he was majority leader, didn't even put it up for a vote. And while well, we never even got that $1,400 stimulus check... We did eventually get it underneath current President Biden, but we would have had that $1,400 underneath former President Donald Trump, which would have been three stimulus checks underneath former President uh, Trump. And that would have left zero stimulus checks underneath current President Biden. And you know that he wouldn't have wanted to come in and had three stimulus checks underneath Trump and zero underneath Biden. So you know he would have came in and issued a stimulus check right away, which he did, but we probably missed out on at least a full stimulus check single-handedly because of Mitch McConnell, which he blocked it from his own Republican president. So, yeah. Now, the White House's initial response uh, to Mitch McConnell was, we don't need to kick the can down the road because it's really just a temporary Band-Aid and we could be back in this position in two months. And remember that the Democrats really don't want to raise the debt limit ceiling through the reconciliation process, which is kind of Mitch McConnell's forcing them to do this. But uh, remember, we only have about a week to raise the debt limit ceiling, and this is the only offer on the table. So the Democrats pretty much have to take it at this point. And well, um, yeah, so we have averted the crisis for now, but it's a temporary band-aid. So here's my question to you. Do you feel better about the debt limit crisis? Now, they haven't passed the bill yet in the Senate. That doesn't mean that this could fall apart. Um, they're still going to have to vote on this. They're still going to have to actually pass the bill and get everybody to agree on this. I'll keep you updated on the situation because this is literally unfolding here by the minute. Um, also, just let me know your thoughts on this. Do you feel good about a two-month extension on the debt limit ceiling? Do you feel good that the Republicans and Democrats have an agreement to extend it for two months? Do you think that they'll be able to extend the debt limit ceiling during that two months? <laughs> feel like we've been down this road before. Do you think we're going to be, do you think we're going to fast forward two months from now and be in this exact same situation? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So the problem is, is are we going to do this again? Or are the Democrats going to raise it through the reconciliation process, the stimulus package? Or are they going to, come to an agreement with the Republicans in the next two months to raise the debt limit ceiling or maybe get rid of the debt limit ceiling altogether. Yeah. So let me know your thoughts. I mean, remember, they still have to pass the bill. This is just an agreement they have to with Mitch McConnell. Um, they still have to pass the bill. This would be crisis averted for the time being a band-aid, a two-month band-aid. Uh, on an open wound, kind of, kind of, so to speak. Let me know your thoughts. How do you feel? By the way, this did send the stock market up. The Dow Jones actually made up a 450 point loss up to 100 points positive. So the Dow Jones basically went up 550 points. I told you this would happen. So basically, I told you that as soon as they came to a deal, that the market would be basically shoot up because uh, the fears, I mean, were there because, I mean, Everybody had a lot of fears that we would be basically a huge potential default. I mean, everybody had a lot of fears that, 
hey, we could be missing our Social Security payments. We could be missing our child tax credit payments. We could be missing our bond payments, military payments, everything, right? So as long as they actually pass the bill, which, I mean, we do still do have that kind of, I mean, they have to actually pass the bill, right? So uh, the fear is still a little bit there as long as they actually get the job done. And I'm not going to hold my breath here, but they do have a <laughs> tentative agreement. But uh, the stock market did shoot up literally uh, before closing because it, on the news, it was really, really great news. I mean, they went from a 450-point loss in the Dow to a 100-point gain because really it was just amazing news that uh, Mitch McConnell literally made a 180-degree turn. We were expecting them to vote here today and it to be a fail. So we went from having a fail to Mitch McConnell saying, hey, here's an olive branch, although a two-month olive branch. Put it this way, a two-month olive branch was better than a potential default, right? I can hear seniors rejoicing uh, across the screens. You know, I can see your 75,000 people watching this video right now saying, thank God we're going to get our Social Security payments. Thank God we're going to get our child tax credit payments. Thank God everything is not going to default. Again, they still have to pass the bill, right? But I mean, I think we're crisis averted for the time being. But the problem is, is are we going to be back in the situation in just a few weeks? You know, so I mean, two months, think about eight weeks. And you think about four weeks from now, we're going to be saying, all right, we have four weeks to go. All right, we have three weeks to go. All right, we have two weeks to go. Even my wife was saying, why are they doing this for only two months? And, and, and I get where, you know, because again, I, I consider myself a realist, a centrist, an independent. I get where Mitch McConnell's going. He wants to force the Democrats to do this because the Democrats have done this to them in the past, albeit it was 15 years ago. And it's just this, it's this tit for tats with the Republicans versus the Democrats that, that just never ends. And, and it's just, uh, it's the American people that is just always the losers in this game, right? You know, the politicians, they're worth you know, I, I get a lot of comments that saying, oh, are they, they going to lose their paychecks if the government defaults? And it's just like, yeah, I see those comments, right? And and yeah, I think I think that if the government defaulted, they would they would lose their paychecks maybe for a week or two. They, they don't care. All these politicians, unless they're like first timers, they're worth millions and millions of dollars, right? Mitch McConnell's worth like $80 million. Nancy Pelosi's worth like $100 million. You think they care if they miss one week of paychecks? They don't care. Like, it doesn't matter to them, right? There were so much money that, like, they're, they're, like, completely out of touch with the average everyday person. Whether it's Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, even Joe Manchin is worth, like, $8 million. And his daughter in the EpiPen scandal where she raised the price of EpiPens over 600% is worth millions and millions of dollars, right? And that's and that's the problem why the average everyday person doesn't like politicians, whether they're Democrats or Republicans. That, that's why so few politicians are liked. I mean, there's, there's just not many of them that are liked. I mean, when you think about the average everyday person that has, that is liked, I mean, there's, there's, there's not a lot of them. I mean, uh, and at the risk of, I'm not even going to name a few of them. I mean, you can let me know who who's like, because, you know, if I, if I name anybody, they'll say, oh, I knew you were a Democrat. Oh, I knew you were a Republican. And it's just like, I, I get those comments all the time, right? There's really not many politicians that are liked. And if they miss a payment or two, uh, it really doesn't matter to them, guys. So what what the, the main thing here is, is that, we didn't see the country default, thank God, um, and that now we can focus on the stimulus package. And what's going to happen here with the stimulus package is, are the Democrats going to swallow some pride? I think they're going to have to swallow some pride and put the stim put the uh, the debt limit ceiling in 
the reconciliation process. That I, for some reason, the Democrats don't want to do that. I think the main thing is that they didn't have time to do it. They didn't have time to do it, but I think this two-month extension will give them time. Definitely, definitely give them time. So I think the time factor will, they won't have that excuse anymore. I think that Mitch McConnell, that's one of the main reasons that he did this two-month extension. So I definitely get Mitch McConnell's strategy on that. But the problem with this is that, uh, do we really want to do this whole debt limit ceiling thing again? The problem with this debt limit ceiling thing really is that they do this every one to two years. So it's like a government shutdown where they do that annual government budget shutdown every year. They do this with the debt limit ceiling every year, but it's like way worse. It's like a government shutdown, but a hundred times worse. It's like the, the consequences are a hundred times worse. So, and we've never had it happen because the consequences, if it does happen, are a hundred times worse. So we've had some government shutdowns before, and I don't think everybody realizes how much worse a government default is. And uh, I think as everybody was watching the show here and kind of realizing, and we, we started to see the president say how bad it was, and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen saying how bad it was, and even Bernie Sanders saying how, and Ch Chuck Schumer saying how bad it was, uh, and even Mitch McConnell saying that we can't have a government default. And um, even even some of the Republicans saying, yeah, uh, we can have a government default, but the Republicans were the ones <laughs> voting no. So even, even Mitch McConnell came around here. I think they wanted to uh, put some pressure on and uh, but I think even even the Republicans knew that we can't have this happen. The problem with this is that sometimes these 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 situations get so tense that they they lose themselves in the fog. And that's why these government shutdowns happen sometimes. And, and we've had government shutdowns where like both sides say we don't want a government shutdown to happen. But then they happen. Right. And. That's why even a default can happen. And, and the problem with the default, it's like a government shutdown with 100 times worse consequences. So that's why even though you, you'll see both Republicans and Democrats saying, oh, we don't want a government shutdown to happen. It, it's terrible. We can't have it happen. And yet they happen. Right. So the, both sides will say the same thing about a government default. Remember, a default and a government shutdown are, are two different things. And both sides will say, oh, we don't want a government shutdown to happen, but then they happen. So to think that a government default can't happen, it's like, well, they say the same thing about government shutdowns and they happen as well. So I think we're going to have crisis averted for now. But remember, it's just a, it's a temporary band-aid, right? And it's like, are we going to do the same thing again in just a few weeks? And are people's social security payments and um, the full faith and credit of the United States and, and everything going to be at risk again? So, yeah. So the thing is, is that they get, they'll, they'll definitely be able to pass the stimulus package by then. But the Democrats are going to have to swallow some pride and actually put the debt limit ceiling raise in there. Remember, we had statements from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi saying they didn't want to put the debt limit ceiling in the reconciliation process. They said they, they, they can't and they shouldn't. So now they, the whole they can't because of the time limit, Mitch McConnell's taken that away because he's basically given them this two-month extension. So now I think the Democrats are going to have to swallow some pride and put this debt limit ceiling raise in the reconciliation process, which is really just like they can do it. It's just a, it's a pride thing. Uh, they don't really want to do it in there. And, and the other thing is you're, they're going to have to get all the Democrats to agree to it. And again, it's really just a, it's a pride thing. So there might be a little bit of a, of a fight there between the Democrats because some Democrats might not want to do it. And you're going to have to have all the Democrats agree to it. So, I mean, we could have that issue as well. So Mitch McConnell's changed his mind. And honestly, a really good thing that he did that. Um, thank God. 
because, again, we can't have the country default. Whether you're Republican, Democrat, no matter what you think about the debt limit ceiling, it has to be raised just to pay the country's bills, the interest, and all that good stuff, right? They've raised it 60 times in the last 80 years. And again, now that they're going to raise it, they're going to raise the debt limit ceiling just for two months. So, uh, yeah, it's just like, uh, talk about kicking the can down the road. We're kicking the can just for two months. So now we'll be able to focus on the stimulus package, but only for two months. So they're going to have to focus on the stimulus package and then pass a debt limit ceiling raise in the stimulus package. All we're trying to get Joe Manchin and the Democrats all to agree on the stimulus package. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like uh, there's a lot going on here. So and remember, uh, they really need to pass this in the next two months anyways. Child tax credit payments, um, those monthly stimulus checks, they end at the end of this year, at the end of December anyways. So um, there's really a lot at stake here. So, I mean, it's really time to, uh, you know, <laughs> shit or get off the pot, as, as my father would say. So. Um, they're going to have to come to an agreement. So I think the Democrats have kind of narrowed it down here. It's no longer going to be a $3.5 trillion package. But remember, they moved, they removed immigration out of there. The Senate parliamentarian kind of removed that. It really wasn't the Democrats' choice. Democrats are actually pro-immigration. Uh, they want a path to immigration in there. But the parliament, Senate parliamentarian ruled it out of there. It wasn't the Democrats that want wanted to remove it. Uh, the Senate parliamentarian ruled it out there. That was like several hundred billion dollars. So that alone kind of took the, the package down close to three trillion dollars anyways. So um, that kind of lowered the package anyways. So that kind of helped them out a little bit because they have to lower the package anyways to kind of get Joe Manchin to get him get closer to his number anyways. So that kind of helps them out anyways because they're going to have to get closer. Joe Manchin has come to $2.2 trillion. So they're going to have to find room to lower a trillion dollars anyways. I think probably a good way to do that would be to um, take a year off the child tax credits or two, um, a year of these payments. Because again, down the road, they can add that year or two on later. Um, and re Republicans have actually been in favor of the child tax credits as well. But raising that later on, could be could be tricky uh so it's all give and take so we're really going to have to see what they're going to be able to do with this i'll keep up to date um remember they still have to pass the bill on the debt limit ceiling so don't miss any videos at this point deals fall through all the time they have to actually do it they have to actually either get the votes from the uh republicans or get unanimous consent from the republicans and we've seen deals like this fall through. So it's a very tense situation in the Senate. So I'll keep you up to date. Make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't yet. It's completely free to do so. Um, and don't miss any videos at this point. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can click this video here to watch my newest stimulus check video next. And this video is about Social Security raise. We have two different Social Security, two or three different Social Security raises on the horizon. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.